the Assad government has fallen, according to all sources, including the Russians. The Sir civil war in Syria just dramatically changed everything with the fleeing of Bashar al-Assad, which by now is clear is not inside the country anymore, and Damascus has fallen to the so-called rebels or uh, the terrorists uh, that are, according officially to US terrorist lists, now um, in charge of the uh, of large swaths of Syria. And this is a highly significant change, something that hasn't happened ever since the beginning of the civil war in uh, 2011. The, I, uh, it's difficult to understand how this went so quickly, other than by analogy to how, in the end, Afghanistan fell right back to the Taliban once the US-backed regime in uh, in Kabul basically lost its uh, military protector and the the actual Afghani uh, defense forces that had been built up to the uh, at the time then all but collapsed and this is something that John Whitbeck a international lawyer in Paris pointed out in an, uh, in a couple of uh, emails that uh, he was sending that really the one thing that this tells us by how, how quickly this went and how how dramatic it was, we can really only infer that the actual situation on the ground in Syria or the the state of the of of the of the Syrian forces was uh, much much worse than a lot of uh, commentators and observers uh, used to believe up until this point, and that it was more or less really the uh, propping up by Iran and significantly by Russia that kept the Assad regime in power, but that the Syrian army itself had been hollowed out or that it was completely unmotivated and it also had no reason to continue fighting and, and defend the, the people in power and that in this case it must have been a strategic decision by Russia, maybe also by Iran, but probably mostly by Russia, to not try to uh, to fight the inevitable. Because, as I must say, um, uh, the the great um, uh, Brian Balletic from the New Atlas points out the the way what's happening right now. It seems very much as if though there's a concerted effort going on to put pressure on not so much on Syria as a main target but on Russia on the Russian Federation to accomplish something that in a RAND Corporation report of 2019 um, has been laid out um, which is of course the collapse of the Russian Federation by putting um, putting pressure on all of the um, areas where it is involved in Syria is an important one and we are seeing right now how also in Georgia there is a concerted effort going on on putting pressure on uh, getting a regime change that would ultimately lead to Georgia becoming a, uh, a, a enemy of Russia. And although the current Georgian dream government is anything but a friend of Russia, it is basically serving as a buffer in the in the Caucasus and it is it is trying to avoid an escalation with Russia and that's of course everything that the neocon faction in Washington wants to change and this the putting pressure on on us on Bashar al-Assad on Syria um, is another is another strategic move that although by now it seems very clear came from first and foremost from Turkey, um, but this is where we really want to remember that Turkey is a strategic ally of everybody and first and foremost of, it, of, uh, of itself, and that in this case it seems that uh, Erdogan played a gamble that seems to be working out very well for him, and this is something that was pointed out by uh, Professor Mohammad Marandi on a very uh, on a wonderful talk um, on the channel 
uh, India in Global Left by um, by Chodisman Muhidir, uh, who um, who was on this show Neutrality Studies before, and I I, I urge you check it out. the The interview with, that he did with uh, Muhammad Marandi is now already um, one or two days old, and already the information is outdated. But the strategic the strategic um, outlook that Muhammad Marandi presents is still valid. I believe this is first and foremost a large victory for um, for Erdogan of Turkey and for Netanyahu of Israel. It is a win-win situation because a, um, a thorn in the back of both of them has now been taken out. And just to it reiterate this again, the person now in charge um, of large swaths of Syria Basically anything you can see here in green that is um, and let me also specify again that um, uh, Brian Berletic correctly points out using these maps and using these this information is un giving unduly a lot of credit to the uh, information space created by the US and its um, and its allies and by a certain a certain group and narrative but it is the best or the most up-to-date information available and this seems to be what it is there used to be an entire red zone controlled by the Assad regime even the choice of colors is like very indicative for uh, I the ideological leanings of these people that the, <laughs> the rebels are green symbolizing of course something good something that you want to support and red always symbolizing what you want to fight against who the evil the baddies are always the red ones aren't they and the yellow ones being something uh quite neutral and and different and of course the yellow zone this is the kurdish controlled area kurdish controlled area together with the united states this is where the u.s is also based and where the u.s has um most of its 900 to 1000 troops and this is where the u.s also is currently looting the Syrian oil reserves or has been looting the Syrian oil reserves for at least the last now uh, seven, eight, nine years. Um, uh, the, the green area is now the area that is controlled by these rebels. And again, rebels in uh, quote, uh, quote, unquote, um, it is controlled by this man here. Um, the, 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 the 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 leader of this a this HDC group, uh, which was recently interviewed by CNN in a, a, a how CNN pulled that off is is a mystery to me. Although it is very indicative for the level of preparation there was also for this kind of a very swift and large and 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 quick operation which with which which within two weeks now has seen a complete reversal and ultimately regime change that the United States has been aiming for in Syria for the past uh, 12 years. Uh, this In this exclusive interview, the, the guy Jolani um, Hayat Tarir, uh, um, uh, my apologies, so um, he is called Jolani um, and he is, he is heading HD S uh, Hayat Tahrir al Sham and this Hayat Tahrir al Sham it must be emphasized is officially on the list on the terrorist list foreign terrorist organizations of the U.S. Department of State. Um, it is right here, uh, HDS Tahir Al Sham, and this is the group that is has been propped up by uh, Turkey and we can infer with the tacit agreement of uh, NATO and the United States. It is what CNN and other Western news outlets, including The Guardian and so on, refer to as the rebels. Uh, here again, the Syrian rebels. The only ones who talk about terrorists are actually the Russians in on Russia today. They keep referring to this group as uh, terrorists, but all of the Western media is referring to them uh, value neutral as rebels. And it is we although we have already seen videos coming out from Aleppo where these rebels have been beheading, beheading, cutting off the heads of uh, people connected to the uh, to the forces of the Syrian uh, government, and this is something that other sources of mine are saying they are expecting to uh, increase, especially against the um, minority Alawite 
uh, um, a faction or or, or a, is a, um, a religious group. The Alawite religious group is in, in a minority uh, Muslim group that from which Bashar al-Assad hailed, and they have been repeatedly branded as. Uh, as 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 traitors of the of the faith by these um, by these by this terrorist group and the fate of these people now really hangs in the balance and it is any it is anyone's guess what's going to happen next the U U.S. media and Western media is trying very hard to portray that. Um, there will be an orderly a transition of power, and that the current prime minister of Syria is in is in touch with these with these groups, and that they are striving for a peaceful transition. And of course, in these interviews and so on, these rebel leaders have been saying that they want to be the uh, representatives of the older Syrians, and that there's going to be a democratic future, and so on and so forth. But uh, honestly, it is hard to believe that any such thing will happen. Apparently, this um, specific uh, extremist group is even willing to cut a deal with Israel and is apparently thinking about uh, continuing its assault into Lebanon because, let's not forget, Lebanon is just right next door and Hezbollah, which has been a supporter of the uh, Assad regime, might be next on the target list and, in, and the uh, the Israelis are now already um, co uh, are now already working on bombing campaigns as we are speaking. There have been updates here that uh, where are they? Uh, reportedly, Israeli aircraft launch raid on Mese military airport and other areas in the countryside of Dara and Kin Kinetra. Israeli aircraft targeted the army battalion in the newly liberated Ch Chidede. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this uh, this city's name. And the aircraft is still hovering over the area. So although the Israelis have also announced that they would not enter Syria, they are already com uh, already implemented large tar uh, large uh, military campaigns right um, outside the area of the the occupied Golan Heights. And again, this is uh, this is rather important, right? Um, for the past 50 years, Israel has been occupying this part here of Syria, the Golan Heights. It has annexed it. Uh, Donald Trump in his last term has recognized this territory as part now of uh, of Israel and uh, the although the the international community all has equivocally uh, un uh, univocally basically rejected those claims and still re regards this uh, the Golan Heights as part of Syria this is a this is something this is a strategic high ground that Israel is trying now to defend and and, tr and uh, is trying to now even fortify further and it is um, now evident that Israel is using the excuse of the turmoil in Syria as as a reason as an excuse for further bombings and for further weakening of the uh, groups inside Syria that it perceives as a threat and it wouldn't surprise me if there finally also were boots on the ground in order to create an even further buffer zone or annex even more territory because uh, Israel is also a master in not letting a a uh, good catastrophe go to waste in order to uh, to further its territorial uh, claims, which is why also Lebanon must be under now extreme uh, pressure, also because now it is basically surrounded by two um, hostile groups um, on all of its borders. The um, it is important though to note that this new situation creates certain. Uh, also, so also strategic problems, especially also for the United States, because again, these green groups here, the the terrorists, the rebels, um, are clearly backed by Turkey, which at this point is still denying that it had anything to do with these latest uh, with these latest developments. Although it has agreed to be part of the Astana process to talk to uh, Russia and Iran and um, and talk about the future of the um, of Syria although now it seems that this will this will probably take a different shape as the um, as the allied forces of Russia and 
uh, Iran, Mr. Uh, Al-Assad, is now outside of the country. And at the moment, nobody knows where exactly he is, but there's really only two places for him to be. It's either going to be Russia or Iran. And looking at the situation, it is more likely that he uh, will turn up somewhere in Iran, but we don't know that yet. It is, um, it's a mystery where he is. Um, currently, it seems that there is no, um, that there's no control left um, for the former regime in Damascus, and that um, the, the the West is really like rejoicing at this, the 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 glee with which it is being reported that the that the al-Assad regime has been uh, ousted is very, very telling. This is something that the, uh, Washington has been wor working towards for for over a decade now. Um, and again, to, co to come back to where we were at the beginning, the one thing that this really made clear is that the Syrian forces were extremely, extremely weak and that it's it must have been a strategic decision by Russia not to fight this war and not to die on this hill while the war in Ukraine which is way more important uh, for the Russians is of course on on the way to be uh, won by Russia it probably ha Moscow probably had to make this strategic calculation not to try to um, over invest into this theater and after all what comes out of this is going to be anyone's guess and I do think that the United States should be the first of all countries to understand the dangers of uh, of empowering a terrorist group because if the terrorist group takes over a country let's say let's call that country for just for a second Afghanistan and let's call the terrorist group the Taliban that used to fight against the Soviet Union and that you propped up with all of these weapons because the enemy of your enemy is my friend if this is uh, if there's a similar strategic thinking going on here although it will go it must it did go through turkey um then the danger and what can come out of this would be imminent apart from the fact that this group uh, the ths is anything but a united front it is split it is split up into different groups and who has the strategic command over all of them and if there is a strategic command is anyone's guess and also whether the influence of Turkey over them is still what it what it used to be is also in question um, these are not organized uh, these are not military forces that are integrated in the way that the US forces or the Russian forces or even the, or the Iranian forces are integrated under a chain of command and under very clear uh, structures these are paramilitary groups that cooperate and that now are in charge of a huge swath of land which also means that they're not everywhere and not everything is uh, is um, monitored. Hence, this is still a powder keg. And although we are now seeing in the West these um, these pictures of people uh, apparently apparently celebrating and being happy, um, what comes then next? Also, for the people who are now under the um, under the sway of of this regime, is anyone's guess? Um, and what we can what we can bet on is that if these champions of the collective West are going to implement draconian uh, laws and punishments, then we will not hear from them anymore in these same mainstream uh, outlets. The West is definitely and for sure taking this now as a uh, strategic victory, although I am pretty sure that from the Russian perspective this is going to be a tactical retreat from a theater, which is not unimportant. Let's not forget this was the only warm water port that the Russian uh, Navy had uh, access to outside of the uh, the ports it immediately has uh, has on its control in, in Crimea and so on. Um, so the we don't know whether the Russians have already retreated. This will has probably not taken place yet, but it is unlikely that the military presence of Russia in Syria will uh, will continue under this under this uh, changed scenario. Um, although. Turkey, the role of Turkey, and the fact that Turkey 
um, also has been uh, collaborating with Russia to a certain extent. In fact, that Turkey is um, uh, a BRICS is trying to become a, a BRICS um, partner state, and the role of Turkey when it comes to to Crimea and the pressure that Russia can still influ uh, can still have on it will also decide something. But there is a rivalry going on, a very clear one between Erdogan and Mr. Putin. Now, not not everything just boils down to personalities, although they do they do um, that does make an impact. Impact. Uh, but the, the picture in the Middle East has changed, changed, unfortunately, especially for the Palestinians. It didn't change for the better. There is now even less uh, pressure on Israel to stop the genocide in Gaza. Um, the Iranians are more isolated than ever. This is first and mostly also a strategic uh, tactical defeat for Iran. And um, I have friends who've been observing the region for decades, who are telling me that they still believe that this is a further step toward a war with Iran, as now all of its allies in the region have been either weakened or eliminated. The Assad regime is now gone. Uh, Hezbollah it has been severely weakened. Hamas is fighting for, for survival in, in uh, Gaza. The Palestinians are are being eradicated uh, so Israel seems to be on quite on quite a a strategic run here um, albeit like it must be said again they these are ultra uh, uh, these are Islamic forces I mean this 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 front is the successor of <clears throat> is the successor of Al Qaeda um, I have a hard time to understand how it is that this is this is a ter this terrorist group wants to wants to cut a deal with Israel. I can't really believe it, and I will try to find somebody to explain that to me or to or who understands this uh, this dynamic much better. Uh, one thing is clear, though, which is that the power dynamic inside Syria is changing. Not for the better, I'm not expecting more stability, because again, stability is not in the interest of either Israel or the United States. Um, a, a continuous stream of chaos is what um, serves what serves the current interest the most, um, because as long as everybody else is divided and unstable and fighting with themselves, there is the best. That is the best environment for uh, for U.S. Western interest and Israeli interest in the region to actually flourish, because a united West Asia is a threat to U.S. interests. Um, we keep watching what's going to happen, but it seems to me unlikely. It seems to me unlikely that the uh, we will hear much more from the Assad regime, and that it is rather the Russians and the Iranians who now will deal with a changed power balance in the Middle East. Thank you for your attention.